and let's roll out, roll out, roll out, roll out, let's roll out. We have, we have returned, believe it or not. Who are we? And what is this? Man, I don't even know no more. This is Food, Fitness, and Fun. And I'm here with a special guy, my guy. <laughs> Sensei Dre, the unknown one. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel gonna come at you. It's Ariel shit. Know, Ariel right? gonna come at you. Yeah, yeah but I, You been yeah. hey, Sensei. That's all right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know I mean? All yeah. right, and I am JD, a.k.a. He Who Pods. And since I got the specs on, if you watch weeknights, you know that also means I'm rear view mirror. You feel what I'm saying? That's my other AKA now for when the reading comes out. So with no further ado, you know what we do here. So we starting with food. It should be right on the screen for y'all to see those who are watching and those who are listening. Well, I don't know. You're going to have to just listen to us describe it. Uh, but tell us what we're looking at here, Dre. All right. Uh, well, we looking at some chicken. Finger licking uh, chicken? <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, it's all about getting that protein in. And uh, this is some jerk chicken uh, from a Jamaican spot here. And, um, you know, just jerked. And basically, I'm just really trying to get my protein in. So most of my meals have a lot more protein than anything else. You know, so um, even though I'm not on some like zero carb stuff, I'm definitely, I definitely reduce the carbs a little bit. So you can okay. see in the picture that there's some like bread there, you know, it's not necessarily with the chicken, but I'll eat a little bit and uh, I'll basically I have the chicken first. And then if I feel like I'm not full yet or not satisfied yet, then I'll have some of the carbs to go with it. Uh, okay. And, yeah. And so I may not eat all those carbs there, like in that picture, probably have one or two until I was satisfied. You know what I'm saying? But um, okay. your chicken is basically like get all the protein you possibly can. And it's a little, it's a little, uh, I guess, hack, you know, if you want to call it that, you know, because you basically want to get if you're trying to get stronger, trying to build muscle, you want to get as much protein as you possibly can. So this is a way of like, okay, eat your protein first, right? And then give yourself a minute, you know, don't rush. I know we all eat fast food, we have everything like this, but that's how we mess up. You should actually right. really be eating slow, you know? Yep. Eat your food, drink some water, see how you feel. And if you feel like, oh, you know what, I'm not quite, you know, satisfied or not quite full, you don't need to be extra full, then you can add some carbs with it. And that's basically what I've done there is have just the jerk chicken with a little bit of carbs on the side, a little bit of bread. Okay. Yeah. So. So not really keto, just reducing the carbs. Yeah, not zero. You know, keto, I believe, is is low carb. You know what I'm saying? So I do like eating like that, um, but I'm not on some like zero. You know what I mean? Like I do, I feel like carbs play a, play a place, and especially play a place when you're building muscle too, because you, you, your body does need carbs, but you don't have to overload it. You know what I'm saying? So right. a lot of times when we eat things together, like meat and some kind of carb, you really don't know when you're full. You know what I'm saying? Or you get full of the carbs first and you haven't eaten your protein where you're just like, ah, oh, I'm full. I don't want any more, but you're leaving a protein there. So what I'm suggesting is eat the protein first, all of it. You know what I'm saying? And then while you're eating your protein and drinking your water nice and slow, if you feel like, you know what, I want to have like a bite of that bread or a little bit of that rice, then go in. You know what I mean? But fill up on that protein first, you know. That's basically what I think people should give a try. See how that works for you. You know, and you'll find yourself find yourself eating less food when you do it that way. You know, if you're dieting, you know what I mean? Or you're dieting and you're also like working out and you're trying to get that that muscle. I mean, you gotta get that protein in. So give so it a you, try. Yeah. So you're 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 going with the old school 
consume your weight in protein method? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say you need to consume your weight in protein. <laughs> That'd be a lot. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the that's the you know that's the the belief. The belief is you consume your body weight in grams. Yeah. So if I weigh two hundred pounds, I would need two hundred grams of protein a day. That's yeah. the that's the methodology. So yeah, that's that why is, I'm asking that is, is that that's that, kind of that, what you want. That is one thought. No, I'm not. A, I'm not necessarily on that. If you feel like you want to get X amount of grams in per day, then yes, like you said, there are like calculators out there, or there's a metho mythology out there. What I'm talking about is your three square meals: your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know what I mean? As you're sitting there and you order your meal, which should be mostly protein. What I'm talking about is how do you eat it? You know, okay. so. What I'm saying is get with every meal, get as much protein in as possible. And one way to do that is to eat the protein first, protein, water or protein, whatever you're drinking and see how you feel. And a lot of times that'll be sad. You'll be satisfied. You might not need to have those carbs. But if you feel like, oh, man, you know what? I got a little bit of room. I want a little bit of carbs. Then eat your carbs and you'll get fuller but at least you got all the protein that you necessarily want. And so I'm not saying oh, only 150 grams or only 200 grams or only 300 grams. That is individual and up to you. And if anybody want to like talk about that, hit me in the DMs or in the comments, we could talk about your specific needs of protein. But what I am saying is get as much protein in it as you can for each meal you have. And here's a little hack to you. Got you. Okay. You know, I will tell you though, an old school, an old school grandma would yell at you if they saw you eating like that. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, "Look at you! You ate all your chicken. You just gonna leave the rice like that? Right. Come on, man! You ain't even eating any of your rice. You just left it there." Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the old school ways. Yeah, the old school ways is you know we like eat a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this, but then you get full and you be like, right. "I don't want no more." You know, now that old school grandma would force you to eat everything on your plate, right? So That's it right. Didn't matter. It didn't matter Please if plate. you were, right. It didn't matter if you were full or not. It's like you right. gonna eat everything on that plate anyway. That's but right. Everybody's grown and making their own decisions, and especially a lot of parents now don't even force their kids to eat anymore like that. That is right. That's true. Pretty much done. So what I'm saying—that's why I said old school grandma, because you know today grandmas are 38. You feel what right, I'm saying? Exactly. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing yeah. old school about 38. No, you know what no, I'm saying? No, there yeah, exactly. And so now it's like, well, eat the protein first. You know what I mean? If you're, especially if you're like a picky type eater, I know so many people are like, oh man, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Then they take mm -hmm. three bites and they're like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't want no more. You know, they, and it's all this food left on the plate. You know, we don't believe in wasting any food. So what I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's mad leftovers. Put yeah. That in the fridge. And so what I'm saying is, hey, if you're dieting and you're exercising, and you're saying to yourself, you know, I want to get stronger or, you know, a lot of women like to use the word toned, which basically means you're still trying to build muscle. I don't care what word you use, just you're trying to build muscle, then you need protein. You need to, and in every meal, we need to be making protein decisions. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, if you know you're that way, well, eat your protein first and drink your water. Get all the protein in that you can at that meal. And if you feel like, you know what, I'm still kind of hungry, now get into those carbs. And sometimes the carbs could be rice or bread. Sometimes the carbs could be just your veggies, you know. But try that if you feel like you're not eating enough, you know, or you don't get enough protein in. Are you really making protein your priority? doing your meals or are you eating everything together and then getting full see what i'm saying so yes yeah that's my food dieting hack to get some more protein in and that's my co-signing on some fly ass jerk chicken <laughs> you know what i mean jerk chicken is the shit i'm yeah. about to say I, nobody ain't nobody mad at jerk chicken you know yeah I mean? yeah you know what I mean? because my thing is that, you know, get flavor you know what i mean just because you dieting yeah. you can't have flavor Get some flavor. Yeah, yeah, no, we don't, we don't believe that here. Uh, I do have a different, a different perspective. Um, I think, I think balance is key, and I think a lot of people who watch this are not at the Dre level of uh, dieting and fitness, myself included. And um, I think, I think for the people watching at home, 
Nothing wrong with trying what Dre said, but if you're not on some Dre shit, probably better to eat uh, a balanced meal uh, because I don't think I don't think everybody's on the Dre level. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. You know, but um, I don't think it's like a intermediate or pro level. I just think that you need to look at your meals and say like, how much protein am, am I getting? And it is, but that's what I'm saying because most, yeah, but most people are not thinking protein in when they're starting. I know, and so they, and then they look at, and they look at, you know, the scale or whatever, and it's like, oh, I'm not losing weight or whatever, and or you might be losing weight, but you don't, you don't see that muscle coming in. You know, you're just like, man, I'm not, you know, I'm losing weight, but I look flat. You know, why is it not, you know, why am I not getting that tone look that I want? So one of the questions that I would ask someone is, well, how much protein are you getting? You know, and are you making protein a priority or are you just kind of like getting up in the morning, having a bowl of cereal and walking out the door? Okay, that's cool. But you had zero protein with that cereal. So that was a missed opportunity. You understand what I'm saying? And so if you're like, oh, no, I have like, let's say, I don't know. uh, Let's say you do protein a protein shake and cereal, right? But you eat your cereal first and then you sip on your protein or whatever. I would be like, reverse that, have the protein shake first. And then if you're still hungry, then eat some of the cereal. You see what I mean? I'm just saying prioritize the protein. That's all. You ain't got to be on like, yo, you know, I'm at this level or that level. I'm just like prioritize eating protein if your goal is exercise and getting stronger. You know what I mean? Because if, if your goal is like, oh, I just want to lose weight, then just eat less. I don't care what you, you know what I mean? You can eat the most horrible diet in the world. If you say to yourself, oh yeah, I'm just going to have, you know, like like something like we did, like where it's like one meal a day. If you're eating one meal a day and that one meal is garbage, you're still going to lose weight. Your body's not going to look all that great because it's not getting the nutrients that it needs, but you will lose weight, you know? You eat one meal a day and that one meal is a Big Mac, you're going to lose weight, (laughs) you know? But are you getting enough protein and macronutrients that you need to do whatever it is you want to do exercise-wise? No. Yeah, but I got to give a little bit of pushback. If if I got to stay, if I got to, let's go with your same meal, right? Where it's chicken and uh, and it was, it's bread, right? Yeah, yeah, some bread. Right, so I got I got the jerk, the fly jerk chicken, and I got the bread, and I get full off eating all the chicken. I didn't have any vegetables. I didn't have any bread. All I ate was chicken, and I do that three times a day. I'm still missing mad nutrients and macronutrients and all the things that you said. Oh no, you're gonna yeah, was protein. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get your macronutrients. So that was like you know, that was just that meal. But you you should definitely get, you know, find a place for your vegetables and stuff like that. You know, that was, you know, I should really preface it. That was just my lunch, you know. And so for me, I'm trying to keep the lunch relatively light, but get that protein in. So it was just, I just need, I just needed protein at that time. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, now my breakfast and my dinner probably had everything in it, but that was kind of like, yo, um, Rather than me going out and getting a burger or something, I'd rather have a meal that has mad protein in it and then some carbs. Because I did eat a couple of pieces of that of the bread. You know, it's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm only I'm only saying that because I know our listeners are are a lot of them are are new to fitness or just starting fitness or like myself struggle with fitness. You know, and that's why I said the Dre level thing because to to focus only on protein every meal. If you hear Dre say, hey, eat all your protein and then see what you got left for everything else. It's like, oh, if I do that every meal, I'm I'm not having mad other stuff that my body needs. And so that's why I was, uh, you know, trying to give a little bit of pushback and kind of speak about balance. Yeah. And we could talk about, maybe for another show, we talk about macronutrients and micronutrients, which are all very important. But mm-hmm. in terms of most people goals, people underestimate how important protein is. 
You know what I mean? So I, from what I see with people's diet, it's a lot of carby stuff. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stuff that's in the box. It's a lot of stuff that's like snacks and chips and stuff like that. And even when they have their meals, you know, there might be a ton of rice or whatever. And I don't really see a lot of the protein. And I'm just saying this from my experience of people that I, that I coach and I see, and I'm just like, that's not, a, that's not, I'm not going to, I don't like to say food is bad, but I will like to say, Hey, okay. How much protein was in that meal? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you, you got this, like, you know, you got this rice, you got, you know, maybe some beans, whatever, but I feel like you didn't get enough protein. That's usually what I see is that people don't, I'm not saying don't eat the other stuff. I'm saying prioritize your protein. That should be the priority of each meal. All right. So, Got you. Yeah, no. So let's do it. Let's do it maybe next episode because I'm with you, but I'm on the other side of the fence. Like we on some okay. Professor X Magneto shit where I'm seeing <laughs> like everybody's plates got a big ass piece of steak or a big ass piece of chicken and there ain't a vegetable in sight. And I'm like, y'all need to start adding them vegetables to your plate and reducing mm. some of that other shit like that big ass steak that's giving you cancer anyway. So. We could do that another episode, so this don't become just a whole meal episode. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but man, you know, our girl, our girl Oprah done done it again, man. You know, oh, oh, Oprah, a lover of carbs, a lover of bread, right? That's your favorite bread, bread, bread. I just love bread, yeah. bread, bread, bread. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Since our last pod, well, a while back, we did speak about Oprah and her uh, leaving Weight Watchers. Right. Uh, but some things have happened since then. Um, and so I got, I got an article to read here. And I'll, I'll try to put the picture on the screen as well for the good old folks at home. But for those who are uh, listening and not watching, I got your back. So this is from Variety. I like to quote my sources now because people in the comments be like, you just be making stuff up. What blog you got that from? Uh, So now we cite my sources. Uh, Variety's headline reads, this is from late April, April 30th. Oprah Winfrey teams with Weight Watchers for live streaming events to help, quote, dismantle the current diet culture. And so y'all could go look that up. But basically it says here, uh, this was before the event happened. It says, uh, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey is off the board of Weight Watchers, but she's still continuing to work with the company as part of her efforts to change the cultural conversation about weight. <sighs> will, <laughs> Winfrey will host Making the Shift, a new way to think about weight, a three-hour event on Thursday, May 9th. And it's going to be on the Weight Watchers channel. You knew it. You knew it had to be there. And so the whole goal is, quote, the event will unpack the multifaceted preconceived notions we have about weight from the profound impact diet culture has had on our society to how we can reframe harmful narratives surrounding our weight and our bodies. The honest and brave dialogue will allow us the space to reconcile our varying thoughts on diet culture, weight bias, and much more. So that was before the event. Just a little slice of this other article, and then we dive in. Yeah. Now this is CNN. CNN afterwards says, <laughs> Oprah, uh, the headline reads, Oprah Winfrey, I set an unrealistic standard for dieting. Oprah said on Thursday evening that she has long played a role in promoting unhealthy and unrealistic diets. Quote, I want to acknowledge that I have been a steadfast participant in this diet culture. She said during a live event broadcast, we already told y'all where, through my platforms, through the magazine, through the talk show for 25 years and online. I've been a major contributor to it. I cannot tell you how many weight loss shows and makeovers I have done. And they have been a staple since I was working in television. Winfrey admitted that through her focus on weight, she, quote, set a standard for people watching that I, nor anybody else, could uphold. I'm going to stop right there. Now, I know you were able to check out some snippets from the show. 
why yeah. don't you tell us why don't you tell us what you saw you know yeah i didn't i, I didn't watch that thing for three hours but i didn't have the patience come on son. why would you, you know what i mean yeah but um you know it's basically her sort of like whining and kind of crying how people have made fun of her every joke is about oprah you know going up and down in her weight and how this was terrible for her and she was just so saddened by that and she realizes now and you know bringing on doctors and stuff that obesity is a medical issue and therefore since it is a medical issue you have to address it like any other medical issue with drugs right so, right so she opens it up with you know that you know putting that um that out there and basically saying hey you got to have treatments and she's been using these treatments and you know basically that's that's really it i didn't, I didn't really watch too much more because you know obviously i kind of disagree with that um because she's really not she's really not being honest with what her struggle really is you know it's not oh yeah my struggle is my weight is going up and down your struggle is food and food addiction and trust me we're not getting addicted to steak or chicken or fish or people are addicted to the super high sugary carby stuff we're addicted to chips and cake and ice cookies cream. and ice cream cookies right. and that's what the real issue is and no one is like man i gained so much weight because i have vegetables meat right. and, a, and a potato no that's not doing it. you know better than that it's because maybe you have a pepsi or whatever you know right. what I mean? it's it's that that ice latte we love yeah, it's it's I mean and I mean these things are super duper delicious. It's really hard to say no, you know, it's somebody's birthday or you have these cringes for you know, for certain food that is like hard for you to defeat. And I really wish you would have spent more time going into that because it's what I was just saying at the last segment is we're addicted to these like high, highly palatable, high sugary things. You know, which usually comes in boxes with the right. cake, cakes. Those are the things. Like, you know, like any like any other person listening to this, you can eat a meal and be satisfied, but that don't have anything to do with your cravings. There's always <laughs> room for ice cream, right? Exactly. So that's what it is. It's not. Oh no, I eat a square meal. You know, every three to four hours. Um, you know, I I, I eat well. I eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and right. you know, I'm just I just can't put the weight off. No, it's the food addiction. And I think she's being careful because she already got in trouble when she kind of attacked a food industry. So she's not going there by saying right. it's our choices in terms of the food. She, but she's basically says, you don't, you can't do any better because it's so addicting that right. this is the way it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? She's saying, okay, because it's nothing you can do about it. You're basically genetically, we're all genetically this way. And so because we're this way, we have to have medications. And, gotta, gotta have medication, man. And paving the way for the only way to do it is with meds. You know what I mean? And uh, that's the sad truth of, that's what I got out of it. I don't know if you, you know, heard about it or you have a different take on it. I didn't bother watching it. <laughs> um, I already knew what was coming because right. of two reasons. Number one, she left Weight Watchers. Right. Right after Weight Watchers acquired a company that does, and it's in that it's in those articles. If y'all want to go check it out, uh, they acquired a company. I don't remember the name. That is a telehealth company right. that allows them to prescribe Ozempic to Weight Watchers customers. That's number one. Number two, that happened There's around the same time, uh, one of our last episodes, Oprah came out and said, hey, I know I said I would never take weight loss supplements or drugs, 
but I've been taking them. So what is there to watch three hours for? To hear Oprah be full of shit for three hours? To call eight million special guests to be shit full of shit for hours? Listen, anybody with eyes, four like me or two like everybody else, can see that Oprah has been using the Ozempic, the Wagovi, and, and the Munjaro. You feel what I'm saying? And so is the rest of Hollywood. So what you going to do? You're going to call up the rest of the cats? Who's on the new drug you're selling? Okay, so this month is not a book. This month is not the Oprah Network. This month is not the TV show. Listen, Oprah's pushing Ozempic right now. That's the truth. That's it. So what I need to watch that for three hours. For yeah. what? To hear but Oprah say exactly what you said. Oh, listen, you know, being fat, is genetics no it's not genetics no for oprah to say because i read their whole cnn article where she says yeah you know we have to stop using the narratives and the shaming and start using the science and the medication no bitch stop it <laughs> i won't be surprised if oprah's getting bread from ozempic well no come I'm on she probably on the board of ozempic on the low low right now could be, or you know, they have their backroom deals. Come but, on, um, baby. Here, let me let me slide you this lobbyist money. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But the so three you can hours... go pimp out Ozempic to the rest of the country because Hollywood is already hooked on it. Yeah. But the That's the what three... I'm supposed to watch that for three hours? Come the on, three man. hours honestly was her guilt. It's basically saying, you know what? I was lying to you guys for years. But you and, still are. And that's my beef. Sorry to cut you off. Nah, go ahead. That's my beef. I, I hate this shit because it's like, yo, fam, if you're going to be apologetic, I can't come up here and say, hey, guys, you know what? I told y'all for years, don't focus on protein. That was wrong of me. I shouldn't have said that. I was, I was lying to y'all this whole time. And then come with another lie. No, nigga, you're supposed to come with the truth after that. Not say, hey. It's genetics, and the only way to fix it is medication. Not running, not lifting weights, not eating less, not trying to get off the sugar and the salt right. addiction. No, no, none of that. None of that, which, which we know has helped Oprah in the past, because o Ozempic, Munjaro, and Wagovi wasn't around 20 years ago when her weight was going up and down. So how it was going down? It's genetics. How it was going down? It's genetics, right? We all sick, right? Only America is sick genetically. Not the people in Africa, not the people in Canada, not the people in France. Only America. We the only ones with fat genetics. Come on, man. Stop it. Y'all lucky my daughter is here? Or I would say some real foul shit because I really got not kind words for Oprah and her peoples that's pushing this and pimping our society more than we're already getting smacked around and pimped. It's ugly. Yeah, that's and that's what I'm saying. It's like it was a three hour non apology. It's a three hour, you know, like you ever see, you ever, you know, see a kid that's in trouble and they give mm -hmm. you an like explanation over and over right. and like trying to say it differently and, right. you know, without just coming out and being like, this, I lied about this. No, because this thing happened in the other person. And so this is her, this is why it takes three hours because it only really takes 10 minutes to say, hey, you know what, guys, I've been lying to you all. For the past like 10, 15 years, I've been using uh, a, a medical drug to treat this. And even though I was doing that, I wasn't being, I, it wasn't Weight Watchers. I, it wasn't because I was eating two Weight Watchers meals and then having a shake later on. No, I was eating whatever and taking Ozempic. And this is how I was losing the weight. Sorry. Come on, son. Sorry. You could, you, could, you could do that apology in a TikTok video in 60 right. seconds. Right. So Come three hours is her trying to avoid that. And basically, let's get the light off of me lying to you. And let's just focus on how this is an actual medical condition. And you have to use drugs to treat medical conditions. So so a three hour infomercial. Yes. That's basically, Why would I watch what it is. that's basically what it is. And so now we're at this place where you either are on the fence, you either on one side saying, hey, this is a medical condition and people can't help it, 
or you're saying, I don't understand this. Like you're eating a lot. You're eating hard. You're making horrible choices. Stop it and switch up your lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So this is where we're at right now. Cause yeah, you're right. People in Hollywood have been doing this. And we said this before. Yeah. Mad years. This is not new for, for, you know, Hollywood cast. They all, they all knew about this. Yeah. But now. And you could see it. Yeah. Mad of them are saying it now. Like they, it's so, it's so widespread that cats who sick can't even get the medication they need. Right. And I, I saw an article the other day that said Nigeria has run out of um, insulin pens because of the demand of Ozempic. You yeah. think the demand for Ozempic is because so many people have diabetes? <laughs> right. Or I like, yeah, just overnight, everyone just got all cooked. of a sudden, all of America has diabetes and needs to fix their problems. All of a sudden, wow. How did that happen? Because of bitches like Oprah. Well, yeah, you know what I mean? So she's not, and I, and, and I feel you, like, I really wish it would have been more of like, hey, dietary choices, the types of food that we're eating. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, like, the food that we're eating has so much trash. This is why yeah. you have, people got to use talk about Let's talk about high fructose corn syrup. Right. Let's talk about GMOs. Let's talk about super ridiculously processed foods. Let's talk about microplastics, which we can't get out of our bodies at this point. Now nah, we're not going to talk yeah. about none of that. You oh, have Lord. a disease. We all have a disease. And we got to either put an injection yeah. in ourselves or take these pills. Right. You, 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 don't, you don't have any. There's no sense of like self-control. It's like when you see cookies, you just have to get them. There's no, and there's, eat the whole there's box. nothing, right? There's nothing within you that can stop you from doing that. In you're fact, sick. in fact, it's it's natural because it's a medical reason. So it's every in time your you genes. See, yeah, every time you see something, just like a two year old, you see candy, right. you have to have it. You see right. cookies, you gotta have it. You know, you 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 see your favorite burger or your whatever, you gotta have. Gotta it. have it. Gotta there's have the no, name. Yeah, there's there's no self control. Why even try to talk about self control? Because you don't have you don't have that. And so, if people accept that, we're going we're moving into a real dangerous place right now. Because yeah. then it means everyone must be on these drugs because no one has self control. Rather than saying, "Hey, it's actually the food." Like before, we had these highly uh, sugary, highly palatable packaged things. People ate real food you know yeah. i mean now now they call real food organic but before you were calling it organic it was just called food it was just food yeah it was just food and you just ate real food that spoiled and so right. you had to eat it within a certain amount of time or it go right. bad because it was real food not something that can last in your cabinet for three years 12 years <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like uh, it might be some there's so many preservatives in that that this is what's causing you know a, a, a an incredible buildup of body fat because yeah, of course and then and then the lack of activity right yeah we've made things way too comfortable in our society mm -hmm. right we drive everywhere you know nobody likes to walk Oh, E-bikes, scooters. Oh, and now we have a place where people are like, I don't want to go to work. I want to work from home. Work I from dig home, it. Right. But when you work from home and you're sitting on your ass all day and then you got everything in your cupboard that you can just go and get at any you're time. Not, and don't forget, on lunch break, you're not going out. No. You, you, hit, right you, hit in the, you hit in the Uber Eats and the DoorDash and the Seamless and right. Grubhub, all of that. Whatever candies you have inside your fridge, your course, come on, kids, son. your kids' puddings and whatever, and so come it's on. like the working from home. We already we already know what happened during COVID, right? Right. Okay. Everybody calls it the COVID twenty, the COVID twenty five. You COVID know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody make, gained twenty five pounds uh, right. during COVID because why? You was you was inactive. You was just at home. So. Right. That had nothing to do with a medical condition. That was lifestyle. And okay. it's still lifestyle. Yeah. You know, 
your food choices are your food choices. I get that they're, you know, tempting. Everybody likes ice cream. Ever since you were a three-year-old kid, you love ice cream. Everybody loves ice cream. But you can't eat that all the time. This is why everyone who's into exercise, everyone who understands and says, okay, maybe once a week you get to have that. You know, that's a that's a every now and then kind of thing. That's right. not something you want to have on a regular basis. And you have a little bit, you move on. Don't eat the whole gallon, you know, because you're depressed or you're watching your favorite show and you just, oh Or, my or God. you saw Dre and his arms was looking good. Now you're like, dang, <laughs> I got to order Cold Stone, get the large and eat the whole thing right now. Because why right. Dre's arms is looking good like that? My arms ain't looking good like that. I got I to gotta eat all the ice cream now. Sorry. <laughs> right. You know, whatever your reason is, whatever your rationale is to, to have a bad diet and then making that, understanding that I made that bad decision. Right. Like, oh, man, I'm wired this way. It's nothing I can do. But I will say this, though. I will say this one thing because mm -hmm. I want to be fair. What well, I have seen people who are taking this medication and because they take the medication, they start losing weight. And that triggers something for them to say, you know what? I'm not going to go back to that fat person I was. I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to start exercising. It's like that, That let's say they lose five to 10 pounds, like where they struggle before to use it. They start using the drug and they see results and they're like, man, okay, for the first time, I'm a little bit lighter. I'm going to go for a walk now. I'm going to go to the gym now. I'm going to eat better foods. So sometimes... You know, getting on that drug gives people an incentive to start getting their shit together. And perhaps maybe down the line, they won't need that anymore because they've been making better food choices. So I'm not going to just rag her the whole time. I'm just going to say, hey, if, maybe for some people you might need that. I'm, I don't know. No, no, let, me, let me take that back. Not me. I'm about to say, Dre, wait not a minute, need. Dre. Not, not me. You got some explaining to do. Yeah, you don't need that at all. But if you choose that, if you feel like that because you got caught into the marketing of her okay. or whoever is marketing, to, marketing it to you, and you took it, and you see some results, and that sparks you to get it going, I am a fan of whatever sparks you to start eating healthier, whatever sparks you to you know start exercising getting back in shape fine it did what it needed to do you know i'm not telling you to stay on there what i'm saying is but, that, but that's where the problem comes yeah yeah because these not i'm i'm just we've we covered it before multiple times here but the whole thing is you're not supposed to stop taking it the whole thing is you take this for life like it's some hulk hogan nwo shit it's for life like yeah, you know what, and 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 I and I would disagree with that. I feel like you're t if if you if you're taking it because you think I need this because nothing else works, but then you start getting your stuff together. I would say, like any other drug that you might feel you need, okay, take a little bit less. Let's see what happens. Okay, take half the dose. Let's see what happens. Okay, take just a quarter of the dose. Let's see what happens. Basically wine try to get your wean yourself off of it you know what i mean because it's really just the lack of self-control if you got the self-control together and you start eating well you may not need that anymore you know because that was a catalyst to kick off your diet and exercise program the kick or not only say program but diet and exercise lifestyle once you got the lifestyle you should be good you know what i'm saying or you know as time goes on, you may not need it all the time. You might need it every now and then to help kickstart something again. I don't know, but what, I, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to give a little bit of credit here by saying I have seen stories where people start taking it and that mm -hmm. helped them get, get their life together. And they've been eating right and exercising ever since then, you know? And when some people have gotten off of it, they felt like, hey, that helped me get to where I am now. So... I don't want to completely just rag the entire thing, you know. I hear you, and I respect that. I'm I'm not on that shit. <laughs> I, again, I'm y'all are lucky. My daughter's here because I have way more foul <laughs> shit to say, and I got to curb my enthusiasm, as the show <laughs> says. 
Uh, I will say this in closing, a little joke, since I've been so serious. You know, Kendrick should sue Oprah. Because mm. apparently, you know, she, according to her, everything Kendrick said is in his DNA is wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got to do the new version. You feel me? I got cookies. I got cakes all up in my DNA. I got ice cream. I got Big Macs all up in my DNA. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I think he should sue Oprah. You know what I'm saying? Little joke, <laughs> Right. right. All right, let's have some fun before right, we end the it. show. So, uh, your girl Lizzo. My favorite. <laughs> she inspires me so much. Are she really? Your girl Lizzo, you know, uh, she had a historic moment while we were away. And I'm not talking about when she quit music and then unquit music. I'm <laughs> talking about. You didn't hear about that. Check out my other podcast, Weeknights. We did cover that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something you put me on to, which is uh, South Park. They did a Lizzo ad. They they remixed the Ozempic. I mean, I could I could throw it in here. Yeah. In the edits. And uh Lizzo reacted to it in real time for the one time. You know what I'm saying? She let us all see her real reaction. And uh that was that was funny. What did you think of Lizzo's reaction? You seen the full yeah. the full long one? The yes, extended we, version? We definitely should should play it and put it in here. And I, I did. And you know, first of all, it's comedy. So it was funny. You know what I'm saying? It was it, funny. It was funny. I thought I thought, you know, South Park did a great parody. Yeah, they did. Uh, that was in the, the commercial. The whole movement of what's going on, right? Yeah. And what makes it funny is that, you know, they're basically saying, okay, everyone is taking this thing. Well, why are they taking it? Because no one is satisfied with how they look. You right. know, everybody's on some kind of platform. Everyone is showing off their pictures, showing off their video. And because we got this hypersensitive society now where we're all under a microscope we right. just can't like live right and so everyone is super unhappy about their body They're, everyone's right. sort of like self body shaming right everyone's insecure about how their body yes. and so South Park took a stab at that by saying well hey if you're Ozempic or whatever isn't working for you you need this new drug and, <laughs> and the new drug is called Lizzo and Love all it. this new drug do is help you to say, I don't give a fuck about how fat I am. <laughs> See, if you don't care, then it's not a problem. Hey. You don't have a weight loss problem if you stop giving your Exactly. Fuck. It's like when Trump said, if, if we don't get tested, we never had COVID. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, so. If you don't get tested, you never had it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> If you don't get tested, you never had it. And if you don't care about the weight, you, you know, don't need none of that. And it is funny. It's funny in a sense because it's like, you know, that's Lizzo's thing, right? Is to be like happy to be fat. You know, we done an episode on it years ago where I called it yep. fake fat pride. Because yep. I still believe it's fake fat pride. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, look up fake Going fat back, pride. Going to back, right? Yeah, look up fake fat pride. You see everything I have to say about it. Um, and for those of you, you know, just a small recap, I think it's bullshit. I think no one's happy about being fat. But apparently that's Lizzo's thing, is to just be happy to be fat. And they took advantage of that by making a drug called Lizzo. Love Take it. Take that. And you don't give a shit. Anymore. They don't care what you eat. You know what I mean, they said all your shame is gone. <laughs> like, it's like oh, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I've been taking Lizzo. Taking Lizzo. I don't care. I, I don't care. care what I eat anymore. <laughs> right, I, I eat don't everything. care what I look like anymore. I eat everything, and I have no shame about it because I said, I'm taking Lizzo. <laughs> you know it? what I mean? <laughs> and yo, I mean that that is where. A lot of people who um, champion Lizzo, you know, mm -hmm. are about because we've covered it here before. Like when Lizzo would post that she lost weight, she had a lot of people, a lot of her following followers get really upset with her. Like, yeah. How dare you be happy that you lost weight? How right. How dare you be happy that you're getting in shape? Right. They don't want that. You're not, you're not supposed to do that. 
nope. supposed to not care. And get That's right. Bigger. <laughs> right, because obesity is uh, if you don't care about it, it, there's no danger. No matter how right. obese you get, no matter how your high mm-hmm. blood pressure is, no matter you know, you, 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 yeah, your joints are swelling. It's hard for you to walk. That doesn't matter. Just, watch out for the big girls. <laughs> watch out for the big girls. Which you know, I loved that show when it was on. Oh. I mean, listen, I told you last time we spoke about it. I don't think Lizzo has a choice with this big girl thing. I, like I said last time, and we debated about it, she is legally tied to being fat. She has a, a I mean, it sounds funny, but it's true. She has legally, an award winning show. The, the, the whatever, I, it's called Watch Out for the Big Girls, right? Or the big, something like that, right? Look out for the big girls. Yeah, I think that's it. Or, watch or Lizzo out. and the big girls. Something. I know the tagline is watch out for the big girls. Big girl, I think the name right. of the show. Listen, whatever. Y'all know the show. It's right. an Emmy Award winning show on Amazon. They don't have many of those. And she's under contract. The on- I believe the only reason season two didn't come out is because of her current lawsuits. But right. it was a big show. No pun intended. It did a great job. Dre loved it. That's how I found out about it. And that's a legally tied thing. And she has other brands that she has that have to do with being quote unquote big or quote unquote plus size, including the thing she launched while we on break, which is big girl swimsuits, quote yeah. unquote. I don't know what they're called, but that's the whole thing. It's supposed to be great looking, great feeling uh, bikinis and swimsuits for the big girls. Okay, well, then she can never be skinny. Nigga, she can't do what Oprah did with all these contracts. That's my belief. I don't think, yeah. she, I told oh, you, I don't yeah. think it's about her being, you know, nonchalant and not caring. I think it's that she's legally tied to contracts that say big this, big that, plus this, plus that. Then you can't be skinny like Oprah. Sorry. You know, and you know what you should do, because we did spend a lot of time talking about this. You should definitely put in some excerpts of what we did before. And we went into this whole character who's a made-up character on Tekken called Slim Bob. Oh, Slim gets, Bob, come on. Who gets upset for losing weight. And where exactly. I said, hey, that's the only ever person who doesn't exist who right. ever get upset. No one is getting right. upset with losing weight. You know walking I mean? around saying, I'm, I'm just skinning bones now. And I want Lizzo to have one of those moments. I want her to just to keep dancing and Kid. Working out and doing her thing, and then look up one day and be like, "What the hell? I lost." If Lizzo, if Lizzo wakes up tomorrow and she's 120 pounds, she will have to lock herself in the crib for six months and eat everything in sight to gain it back. She's legally tied. Like I know it sounds foul, but you got to This is big business, like Amazon. Like I mean, we. This is that's the top of the top. Like. Come on. If if someone sued Lizzo, like because you keep saying legally, if someone sued Lizzo because she all of a sudden got into great shape, she lost 200 pounds and she's like 120 and she's looking fabulous. And someone said, well, we're suing you for a million dollars or whatever the money is. You know what Lizzo would do? Pay it. No one being obese. She would be like, if there's a legal standing for it and it goes to court, Settle court they have to pay it. All right, let me sign that. No problem. I'm not as long as you're not as long as you're not my dancers. I can't <laughs> right. say the rest because my kid is my kid is in the next room. Yeah. I can't say the rest. But I'm not though. going back to being that fat thing over. Right. There. She wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it because nobody likes that. But going back to the episode, if you guys check it out, man, check out that South Park. Because the funny thing about it is. Honestly, if you choose not to get into shape, if you choose not to look at your food and make better decisions, you are on the Lizzo medication. (laughs) That's what I I take the Lizzo at least once a week when I buy a pint of ice cream. You feel what I'm saying? So do I. Listen, where I'm at, it was 95 degrees today. You know, you know, I had ice cream. Come on, yeah. ninety-five degrees. What you want me to do? Yeah, had ice. I had to have a little bit of Lizzo, so I could have a lot of ice cream. They <laughs> take the one little. Just take one Lizzo. Yeah, <laughs> me. Take a little you know bit of Lizzo. Have a lot of ice cream. 
or whatever else, pizza or whatever. You know, what, it, you know what I'm saying? Listen, the thing about it is because I'm no different than anybody else. It's like when I make a decision to be like, oh, I think I want to have pizza or whatever. I understand that. That is what it is for that day. And then, hey, get back on it. So right. nobody is perfect. You no, even see, and, and we don't come up here and act like that. Right. I mean, you even That's see, one you know, thing they can't say if they look at all our episodes. You're not going to be able to say, knows. oh, these guys act like they perfect. We've eaten ice cream on the podcast. Yeah. Right. And, and, if you, and if you look at any of our stuff, when we talk about other people, even people we like, we always talk about how they have their cheat meals, right? Whether, hey, The Rock, he's in shape. He's doing Bobby. He looks great for his age. He likes to post his cheat meals. And, I, and I'm never like, Oh, that's I'm like, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a human being. You can't right. act like, you know, uh, Hugh Jackman, who we talked about before, when he was just like, yep, as soon as the movie was over, I went and had some pizza. It right. made, this, <laughs> this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you work out, you work out. Your cravings are there. You push them to the side, push them to the side. And every, you know, every, uh, you know, I'm not gonna tell you exactly when, but you know, when you feel every like every now hey, and then, every now and then, when I feel like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna get that icy. I'm gonna get that ice cream. I'm gonna yeah, get this. And Go for it. Listen, and like I always say, you gotta be real with yourself. At one point, for like two months, I was coming up here and saying, I'm the king of ice cream. I'm the king of ice cream. King of ice cream. You know, I'm the king of ice cream. King of ice cream. Because I'm real. I know I'll be bodying ice cream. Like, I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I didn't just body some Sonic right before we recorded. Like, I was enjoying right. that Sonic. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But, but the whole... if I show you my step count, your boy got twenty thousand steps today. Exactly. Or that's that's walking ten or miles. Or your um, or your smoothies that you do sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like that's there as well. So it's like you know the one meal you might have. You might have one meal a day that's kind of like eh, that's not the best choice. But if your other meals are a little bit better, then it's not too bad. You know what I'm saying? So I had, I had to have that Lizzo. <laughs> you gotta get the Lizzo. <laughs> but yo, man, y'all should watch. I know you're trying me. to be serious, but I got yeah, this is the I'm fun really part. I gotta know. keep being silly. I want to know what people feel about it. So yo, when y'all take a look at it, tell me what y'all feel about it. Or put it in the comments, whatever, because I think it's hilarious. Oh, and I'm also funny. glad that. She and I love her real time reaction. Right. She, she ain't shoot a video it. afterwards and say. Okay, guys, I just I just saw that South Park thing. She was on some I nah. We're gonna do this at the real time. Let me see. <gasps> oh <laughs> not my album. That was yeah. great. Yeah. That was great. She took it. Not only was South Park great, it was great to see her do it in real time. And not and not take herself too seriously to be like, yeah, I am that person that told you, you know, you know, don't don't give a fuck, you know, or love your body the way it is and, you know, like completely own it. Like, right. that, that's what I'm about. But yeah, you know, it, and and it's about having a sense of humor about this whole fucking thing. Yeah, no, I think she handled it well. If we're going to be serious for a moment, I think Lizzo handled it well. Yeah. But she could have, she could have did a very different reaction. She could have came at South Park and caused the frenzy, did a diss track like Kanye kind of did, like... Yeah. She could have yeah. went nuts. So I think she handled right. it very well. I'm gonna honestly. sue them or whatever, like nah. Yeah. Nah, you know? Like that's what I that's that's what you are, right? You the champion of right. hey, it's cool to be fat. So you gotta wear that badge. You gotta right. wear it. Just take some Lizzo and that's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no doubt. Nice. Anyway, that's it for us. We will be back very soon. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, listening, sticking around, and uh we'll see y'all real soon. Peace.